People always say to add a pinch of sugar to give the yeast in your starter a boost. But does that really make a difference? Hi, I'm Suna and I'm a food geek. We often hear that adding some sugar or honey to the dough will boost the yeast. But dough is already full of starches, so will a little bit of sugar make any difference? That's what today's experiment sets out to figure out. I'm going to build five different starters, one with no sugar, and then increasing amounts of sugar, and we'll see how that affects the growth of the starter. If you're new to this channel, I bake a lot of sourdough bread, and I make delicious food from all over the world. I'm on a quest to get the most out of every ingredient, and my goal is to teach you how to do that in simple and understandable steps. So join me by subscribing and ringing the bell so you won't miss any future videos. The total weight of each starter is 250 grams and the hydration is 100%. The feeding proportion or inoculation is 1 to 2, meaning that I'm adding 50 grams of starter, 100 grams of flour and 100 grams of water to each starter. The control starter will of course have no sugar added and then I'll up the sugar in each starter by 2%. So the second one will have 2 grams the third one will have four grams, the fourth one six grams, and the last one eight grams of sugar. The flour that I'm using in my starter is a Manitoba flour with 12.5% protein. So that falls in line with what's called strong white in the UK and bread flour in the United States. Those were the words. This is the experiment. All right, a little bit about the setup. First, I measured out the amount of flour, water, and sugar to go into each starter and mix them. Then I'd add the kneaded starter on top of each, but didn't mix it in. Then after everything was ready, I'd mix in the starter and make the jars ready for the time lapse. I wanted the time from when the starter was mixed in to the actual recording of the time lapse to be as short as possible. I also wanted the time of mixing for the individual starters to be as close together so that it wasn't a factor in the growth rates. <laughs> I don't clean my starter jars like this unless I need to make a time lapse for you guys, but I want it to look reasonably clean so we can see what's going on. All right, we're ready and set up. I know somebody asked me about the timer and before the colon, we have the hours and after the colon, we have the minutes. The time lapse is recorded with the picture every five seconds, so that one hour takes 30 seconds of real time when played back at 24 frames per second. All right, let's start the time lapse.
Well, I guess in this case, people are right. When adding sugar, the starter grows faster, but also deflates faster. It does not look to me like the sugar boosts the actual expansion power of the starter. I had to cut the time lapse at 10 hours since I needed to go to work. No matter what, the top of the control compared to the top of the 8% is so close that it wouldn't really make a difference in an actual dough. One thing some people are asking about is what I want to achieve with these time lapses, so let me just explain. As we've seen in the hydration time lapses is that the starters in the range where you'd bake a bread from 70% to 100% react about the same. Which means that you can translate this experiment to your dough. If you add the same amount of sugar to your dough, you can expect your dough to rise faster. Depending on what you're making, the added sugar may be a bonus, and sugar is just another tool in your sourdough baking toolkit. Please consider buying a t-shirt to support the channel. The merch store is linked in the card above. I hope you learned something today. See you next time.